Welcome back, this is part 5 of Let's Play Near Automata. Last time, we took off the ruthless songstress Beauvoir, and today we're going to hang out with this, uh, this hostile, so to speak. I actually don't know what happens if you click Don't Go to the Village. I mean, I think you just kind of leave, or you don't leave, so to speak, but you... Well, I don't know actually. I think about because it, it could that could have been an ending, because you do have to follow him for story purposes. But I'm not sure if that would have been an ending to the game, or if it just would have been like whatever, and you come back there whenever you want to progress with the story. But you know, the world may never know. Get an impact bracer. I don't even know what that's for. I think, I think those are like the attack, not attack, but like defense boosting items you can use mid combat because they have some of those so there's like equipment that can increase your defenses and whatnot and then there's also items you can use mid battle I really don't use those because it just I, I don't see the need for them but I think this is a really cool shot nines will explain what's going on here that's what I find so interesting. So, they're sending parts up to the moon and supplies and whatnot because that's where the human colony is right now. It's they relocate to the moon uh, because Earth was basically uninhabitable with un uninhabitable with all these enemies. Um, now, there are yeah, there is a path down here. You can get a treasure chest. Um, the thing that's so well, I'll let them finish talking. Alright, so, I don't know what I was saying anymore. Um, but it is interesting, like, they have the capabilities to create a moon colony, but they can't actually colonize outer space yet, which is kind of interesting. But here we are, at a village filled with robots waving the white flag. Now I am going to make a fool out of myself here because I thought I could get one of the endings um, in this, like at this point of the game, which you can, but not right now. <laughs> so I end up having to leave and come back to reset everything. But like when you first get to Machine Village, you can't get the ending that I'm thinking of. So yeah, so this robot, we'll find out the one, um, well, I won't spoil his name yet, he'll introduce himself, but see, I'm trying to destroy that robot, the circular guy. Um, so the guy with the mark over head, his head just disappeared. I don't know where he went, it was one of those like, oh junk, you just ruined the story. I wanted to destroy one of the robots, because if you destroy a robot in the presence of that robot we're going to meet, his name is Pascal. Um, if you destroy a robot in his presence, you'll get an ending to the game. The problem is, that's only after you come here for like the second time. So, he disappeared, so now that's not possible. So I had to leave to reset the area um, so that we could actually proceed with the story. I'll try to get that ending if I can still do it, but um, it's not like that important. This is a really interesting concept of the game. This is a completely peaceful village. Uh, these enemies, you will never see them attack another, you know, machine, android, anything. Like, they just won't. And so. I tried to get the ending again, and once again, it kind of locks you out of fighting them, which is weird. Like, you can't even damage them anymore. So, go figure, but we'll continue with the story. Now, this guy is kind of cool because he's like, we've been trading with the androids in the resistance camp, which is almost like, if anybody found out about that, it'd be completely awful. Yeah, I'd want, <laughs> I really wanted to make sure you couldn't get that ending. Um, but yeah, if, they, if like the humans or the android leaders found out about that, they'd completely be blacklisted. So they're kind of trading in secret, which is neat, because 
you know, at the end of the day, the machines are machines, and they will have parts. They will have, uh, you know, things that are available for usage, whether it's weaponry or whether it's you know spare items that can be used to make uh, items for the machines. I don't know, but the fact they created this you know working relationship is pretty neat. And it's one of the themes of the game, so to speak, how androids and machines coexist, or if they can. This is kind of interesting. 6-0 is having an existential crisis, so to speak. I find it interesting that she thinks she needs to tell this to 2B. Even though 2B clearly does not care. And I feel bad because it's like... Yeah, you're supposed to be working, but the fact you're forming these relationships is, uh, it's, it's neat. It's how you pass the time, so. But, I even love her response here. <laughs> She's like, every B model needs an operator, like. I kind of wish I could see what she looked like without her mask on, similar to how 2B here always, pretty much always wears her tactical visor. Um, she's almost, 6-0 is almost always wearing that mask. I can't even think if we've seen her without that mask. Uh, so, kind of an interesting idea. I'm not really sure what purpose it serves. Maybe it's something like the same way, okay, the tactical visor's like an aid for the combat models. Maybe the operators, it's like it blocks the mouths so that you can't see what they're saying. I don't I don't know. I don't know why I wanted to come this way. I think oh you know, I was trying to cut back through to the resistance camp and I go straight and I realize you can't get through that building. There's like that wall there, which I find interesting. I wonder why they put they built that wall. My only thought is that they were like, oh, those machines over there are pretty strong and pretty vicious, and they're pretty big, so let's kind of block them out. So, I mean, maybe that's what they were thinking. I don't know. But it is neat seeing all the overgrown trees and everything. Like, that was a huge tree we just walked through. It's like the size of a building, and these are like 60 story. Okay, maybe not 60. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are like 15 story buildings. And in keeping with the always look under the waterfall, they leave a medium recovery down there for you. Which I think is neat. I don't think there's anything under that waterfall. But, I don't know. I think that's a neat little touch. Just, hey, it's nothing major, but if you check under here, there will be something for you. In other news, how about this? I know by the time you see this, it'll be like three weeks old, because it came out this past week. But, Square Enix, they recently announced um, that the Nier series performed exceptionally well. Uh, along with like Final Fantasy and Yakuza, because I think they... No, they didn't publish Yakuza. There's another game series I'm thinking of that they published this year. Um, but Nier was one of them that they're like, yo, this really outsold what we were expecting. And they want to do more of it. So it would be interesting. A lot of people online were saying, that's great. I'm glad that Nier is getting the recognition it should get. But at the same time, the last thing you need is for Square to turn this into a yearly series or to turn this into a mobile series or something that isn't that doesn't truly really reflect the vision of series creator Yoko Taro. So I think it could be good because this is like I said, this is my first near game and I want to play more of them. I'd love to see what Yoko Taro can come up with. But if it means degrading quality just so they can get a yearly release out, I want no parts of that. <laughs> so we'll see though. That's what I love about Pascal. Um, he is so accepting and to he's one of those people who's almost good to a fault. Like he will prove a point that hey, um I'm going to stand by like my peace loving mentality for as long as as long as I can like even if it means putting myself in danger because I want you to know that hey I'm not going to hurt you and I don't want anything to do with hurting you 
Uh, so kind of neat. I like Pascal for that. And he's a pretty big character throughout the story, so we'll see a lot of him. But yeah, this is when the return trips kind of start to get repetitive to an extent. I mean, it's not it's not crazy because everything is relatively close to each other. And after this episode, there's a completely new area we have to go to, a new zone, if you will. So it's not like we're gonna be backtracking all that much but there's enough there are enough times where we have to go back to the resistance camp that I'm like maybe I should cut them out I don't know the problem I'm having though is so let me talk about it this way when I edit stuff yeah, you can fall off that and I don't know if you'll die but you'll definitely lose health and you might die because um, I know some of the falls it'll like respawn you so I'm not sure if that's one of those falls that just automatically kills you in game overs or whatever um, but yeah when I edit stuff so I can edit the video but I don't like watching the edited video as I record in the editing software because if it crashes I have to make all those edits again and then I have to make it perfectly to be able to sync up with the commentary that I recorded because it's post commentary and it'll be really weird if it's if it doesn't match up so um, that said I try that's why I try not to edit these or have to edit them um, prior to like adding the sound and all that stuff just because it's gonna be hard to sync up um, but you know maybe I need to switch editing softwares because this one is not it's not it's not treated me too well the other thing that's kind of interesting so this video should come out just fine but uh what I've realized I'm gonna have to start doing test recordings I was recording some extra parts for Sonic Mania. I decided to do a completely new run through. Like, I wanted to start a new run through because I'm more familiar with the game now. I really enjoy the game, so I wanted to do it justice, and I wanted to play through it. Like, hey, this is uh, this is what we do. Like, we 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 can play Sonic Mania. Um, but again, the sound cut out for the first episode, and or it desynced. Like, it was about two seconds behind, and it's really annoying because then the video got really fuzzy. I'm not sure what caused it. Um, so it's kind of pissing me off because this game comes out fine. A lot of PS4 stuff comes out fine. The Switch is generally okay, but Sonic Mania doesn't work well. It just, it does not work well. So, it's unfortunate, but... Okay, and this is going to be the next boss battle. That's the thing about this game. There's enough random enemies that you can fight throughout the game that are like, oh, that's something to do. That's how I grind. But they space bosses so well because we just fought Beauvoir in part four. And if you just continue with the story, it's like you do a little story, you do a little fetch quest, and then boom, another boss, another big battle. Really neat. So, as you can tell, the other thing is, like I said, do a great job with scenery. As you leave Pascal's village, everything kind of shifts towards monochrome. I mean, there's a little bit of color in there. I don't know how much you can uh, make out on the video, but... And then we get the cool battle music. Really, really neat. The animals are fleeing. Like, that's neat, because it's one of the few signs of actual life left on Earth. So, seeing the animals react to things. Is really neat and then the machines too you would think that those guys would be going berserk because it's another machine that's attacking us but it's not so kind of interesting but this is almost like not the pinch mode music but it's like the it's it's like it's one of the major boss themes I would say it definitely is reoccurring it's like a machine boss theme but Beauvoir was a machine she had her own boss theme. it's it's weird but it is one of the major themes we will hear again but this game, that's the other thing, the sense of scale. Look at that. It's another, you know, Mark styled enemy who we're gonna have to fight. We're gonna have to take him down. And then from this from this level, like from this stance, is like, oh John, look, he could straight up crush me, and he can. He will kill you, as HC Bailey would say. I want to see though if you could jump on his legs, because there's stuff there, but you can't. It's like an invisible wall, so that's somewhat unfortunate. Um But we have to climb this tower. That's probably why I didn't show off the tower when I started the game. Because I knew we'd have to come back here. You can hop down here. There's a treasure chest that you can't get into just yet. Uh, we will 
be able to get that later so I crawl back up and then I think I went too high because if you go high enough you can't actually get out the building I believe that's what happened we'll see in a second um, but yeah I should have just gone to the first floor that I was on and then gone up the stairs because I want to say I get stuck because um, you would think this ladder how high it goes it would go all the way to the top of the building which it does but again I think it just it gets stuck so it's kind of weird Okay, yeah, it's just this little room here, so I don't really know the purpose of it. That There might actually be a side quest in here. Um, I should have just fallen down, honestly. I really should have. That would have been cooler. You see the map bugging out because the, uh, whatchamacallit, we're changing floors and everything. Alright, so back up and... Yeah, there's stairs, and you can also climb up the holes in the ceiling because there's piles of rubble, so that's kind of a neat option. You don't have to go up the stairs if you don't want, but... I really wish they did put something in this building, though, because it's so big, and there's nothing... Can you get the item, please? Get Go around? Nope, don't get the item. You get the item. <sighs> past me. What are you doing, past me? If you watch the what I'm playing, I spent legit like 15 minutes in this building just jumping around looking for stuff and there was nothing in here, so. That's what happens though. If you present players with an area that's big enough at the beginning of the level, at the beginning of the game, they're gonna explore. And then if there's nothing there, it's almost like a waste of time. But uh, this is, I believe his name is Marks, which that's why I kind of started in the first episode because I realized that Ingles and Marx, the names of the, you know, the communist manifesto authors, um, that's the name of these machines, which is kind of interesting because I wonder if, like, communism and sharing of wealth is part of the ideology behind the machines, because they, they do live in packs, I mean, they don't necessarily... They're, they're not really trying to outdo each other, so to speak. You look at between Pascal and even the enemy ones, they're kind of living together cohesively. They're not trying to become famous or trying to become wealthy or anything. They're just doing what they have to do. So maybe that's part of the ideology. But uh, as far as this boss battle, this first phase here, it's um, it's pretty simple. It's kind of like uh, Ingles, really. It's He'll slam you with two of his with his arms. You can do an insta dodge so to speak uh what, what, what i call it before i guess i'll call it the insta dodge and then you can you know react to it and get a couple hits off basically just keep firing he's only level three so he will take a decent amount of damage from the pod fire so it's pretty useful and as long as you stay healed you'll finish him off no no trouble no trouble at all so here he goes again with the attack that i don't even know if it can hit you because if you stand in the middle you'll be fine so I don't really know the purpose of that attack. Attack. But yeah, really wash, rinse, repeat. You can say that about a lot of bosses in this game because they're not, they're not, a lot of them, at least early in, they're not so difficult because they're so big, so they have a lot of hitboxes. Like, you can just hit the whole thing and it'll do damage. And yeah, some have weak points. Obviously, like, hitting this guy's face helps. But I mean, if you're just dealing damage, you're, you'll be fine. I mean, we're wailing away on him, and it's... Yeah, he's done. So, now we have to continue on to get our flight units. I wonder what happened if I fell off from there. Do I, just, I guess you just have to climb back up. Because it's not like the world isn't rendered down there. And this is kind of cool. See, I was showing off the circles on both, because you can pick and choose. Like, they're the same thing. You can pick whichever flight unit you want. Which is neat, because a lot of games would be like, no, this is your flight unit. But they're basically the same, like they're androids. So it's like, we're just using the machines that are available to us. It's not really a big deal if I pick the left one or the right one. I do love that effect, the little uh, the lighting and phase effect that happens when you do a quick dodge. Alright, so the circle missiles, the, the, yeah, the circle of missiles I shot off, that is the triangle attack. Special attack, it's pretty good for it in 3D battles, I mean, well, this is technically a 3D battle, but like, when you have the full X, Y, and Z axis of motion, because this we just have like, up, down, left, and right, but you can't go, you can't change like, altitude, but when you have that option, it's pretty good because you can have, 
you know, an array of missiles around you. This, as you can tell, most of the missiles end up hitting. So it's good because it does do more damage than you can normally and generally do um, on your own. But it's like, it's kind of a waste because you miss out on a lot of missiles. But the closer you are, you know, the more missiles hit. But yeah, this one's really, really a simple fight. I mean, he'll hit you with these missiles, you dodge them, and you just kind of keep shooting. You can't, you can't really, you can't really say much about that. But, uh, yeah, this one in particular, I believe this one is Marks. I know I said the last one's Marks. They have the same name, so it's not like it really, really matters. But, uh, I think if we're being specific, that's the one that becomes Marks. And I guess he's, like, is that an E? I don't know if it's an EMP per se, but it's, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, no, the first one was Marks, this one's Angles. I got that backwards. Yeah, I screwed that up. And there's a huge hole in the ground, so... Of course that's where we're gonna go next. I mean, why wouldn't we go there next? Yeah, so this is pretty crazy. Now, this is a pretty big turning point of the game because we're gonna we're gonna find some good stuff out, but we won't do that till next time. Which I actually have not recorded part six yet, so I'm not even gonna say I could spoil it. I mean, I could spoil it because I played the game before, but I mean, I'm not gonna spoil it because it's not recorded yet. So I don't even know what I'm gonna do in that episode. Kind of interesting, his flight unit looks a little bit darker colored, and I don't remember it looking like that when we picked them up, but it's cool because they auto fly back to the bunker, kind of neat. Yeah, so that's the thing, you're gonna hear about other Yora units, and you're never really in competition with them. Uh, you won't actually be like, oh, we have to get there, and you'll find them together. Like, it's, you're, if they talk about going to collect data, they probably mean you. But you want to jump off this building to this building, because this is one of the major side quests of the game. This is, oh, what is his name? We'll see his name shortly. I think it starts with a T. What's his name? I forget his name every single time, but he is, uh, he's one of the side quests. Um, for this phase, he's not too difficult. He's kind of like a regular enemy. He just attacks a little more viciously. Like he attacks with more, a greater frequency, I should say. Um, like he'll jump around a bit. He'll use his little arm blade attack but it's nothing that is that difficult as long as you stay away from him and use the quick dodge you can get some extra hits off on him and then uh yeah he submits father what was it father soto sato father servo that's his name okay here we go i won't forget that now so he's kind of like your you know mr miyagi your your martial arts warrior who He's trying to get better at, you know, fighting, but not for the sake of destroying the um, androids or the humans. It's more so just to become better and to find solitude in his own life. Uh, so, yeah, you have to fight him again, which is kind of weird. But he, basically what we're going to see throughout the story, he's going to go through different phases. And every time you meet him, you'll get to fight him, and then he'll ask you to bring him some materials. A lot of times you can have these materials already because they're things you could find in the world. Now, if you don't have the materials that he asked for, it'll become a side quest and it'll highlight them on the map and it'll be like, oh, go here to complete Father Servo's, you know, mission. This one's like the White Belt or whatever. And it'll say, White Belt, this is where you can find what he's looking for. You bring those back to him and then he'll upgrade himself and change his fighting style. So it's really neat to see a machine that is like the same machine kind of grow and evolve. Uh, throughout the game so i'll try to show off his side quest especially because i'll just get the items he needs off screen and then show you the fights like at the start of a video or what have you so yeah this one's pretty easy it's a warped wire and you should have one just for um picking oh actually no i think i have to get one 
Oh, no, I, I did have one. Yeah, I did have one. I think it's the next one. I don't have. Um, yeah, so he gives you some money, some equipment, some parts, and yeah, I will show off the dinosaur-like enemies, which really an interesting take on an enemy. It's like a velociraptor or something. It's like a little short, but he's not that fast, so it's weird, but yeah, and as you can tell, level 24, we are getting higher in levels, and we're only level 11, so the game will get a little more lethal, if only because those types of attacks could do some major damage. Um, as you can tell, that took off like a hat, like that was like a fourth of our health. So, you know, just keeping that in mind, you're gonna have some pretty big attacks. And yeah, we killed one of them and we leveled up, so kind of a kind of a big deal. These bosses or these enemies are getting, but still nothing compared to what we're gonna see a little bit later. Now, we have about four minutes left in this episode, and I can't tell you what I'm going to end up doing, because I know I don't go to that sunken in area we saw. I might go and try to get up to this side quest. I think that's what I do. I think I might go get one other side quest, um, but I don't finish them, so it's kind of weird. We're just going to have to hang out and see what goes on here, because I really don't even remember. Because I was debating, I was like, okay, I want 30 minute episodes. If I go to the sunken in area... It's going to be super long, but yeah, this guy's another resistance member, Android resistance member. He wants you to pick up some stuff, pick up some plug-in ships, and uh, I actually might show off where one of them is in this episode. That might be the last thing we do. Um, I don't know. We spend time talking to uh, to angels here. I think that's, that's another thing I do. Yeah, this is so sad because I can't remember at all. I love her first thought is, okay, then if it's alive, destroy it. Like, what are you doing? Okay, so we're going to talk to Ingles here. Um, you have to repair him. That's part of the side quest. I think I'm going to do that off screen and then I'll show you actually talking to them because again it's another fetch quest where you just pick up items pod will tell you where they are so you just have to go find them and uh, it's pretty simple come on now get okay but Ingles is an interesting character because once you do repair him you will be able to talk to him and he'll give you some more insight and backstory into what he was doing and what he it's basically all about. I did want to show off these enemies. I guess they're kind of interesting. They have shields. Uh, this is where one of the plug-in ships that guy is looking for. So they have shields, and you want to shoot them to deactivate the electrical spikes, because those will do a lot of damage to you. And again, this is a mission shortly after that last boss that we just beat, which wasn't that difficult, but again, the enemies are at level 22. And it's like, yeah, they might not do a crazy, like, they might not one-shot you, but as you can see, they will, if, they, if they're in groups, you can take a lot of damage really quickly. And yeah, that was like, again, a fourth of my health with three hits. So, yeah, normal mode, if you don't grind, normal mode is more than enough to keep you sated throughout the adventure. Um, and especially with the addition of the plug-in ships like the Deadly Heal, we'll get um, another one. I forget what it's called, but basically, for as long as you don't take damage in-game, you will, uh, you won't you'll auto heal so it's kind of cool and it doesn't take potions or anything so pretty neat but we got the plug-in ship and there are a couple more i'll probably get those off screen it's part of the reason why it's so hard to record these because i have to do so much prep for side missions which is why i'm thinking i probably won't do too many of them or if i do i'll just do them all off screen and show you the spoils because i mean some are interesting because they will involve characters but a lot of them it's like oh resistance member or oh random machine number 12 so, you just kind of want to go on and do those missions at your leisure. Because they're not too taxing. Again, there's, I think, a side mission that involves Jackass that we'll meet. Or we met her. Um, so, there's a side, side mission with her. I'll show that off because it's kind of cool. Um, gives you an ending, actually. Um, and then, of course, like the Anemone missions and any missions that Pascal has that aren't... Uh, come on now, get, get on the ladder that aren't story related I'll probably show those off because again it has to do with a story related character but like the resistance dude over here he doesn't really 
doesn't really add much, but I will say that said, a lot of them, a lot of the missions can be pretty in depth. But that's going to be the end of this part to near Automata Part Five. Thank you very much for watching. Next time, we'll head to the center of the city. Have a great day.